Welcome to Trick Your CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your CNC. Today, put the brakes on your Z. When I first got my machine, like everyone else, I had the original non-braking Z motor on it. And uh, I noticed right away when I shut the machine off that the spindle would drop and smash the damn bit right into what, whatever was underneath it. Now, obviously, that's, that's really frustrating. You could damage your workpiece, you could damage your table, you could damage your tool setter, your brake bits. All kinds of bad things happen when that happens. So I started looking into it, and on the forums, people were talking about replacing the ball screw with one with a, a, a more shallow slope. So the spindle would not be able to move down under its own weight when the power was cut. So I contacted support to see what they thought about this. And they said, obviously, and understandably, Hey, that void your warranty if you started doing stuff like that. What they suggested was to take a chunk of a two by four and prop it up underneath the and prop it up underneath the spindle so when I cut power, it wouldn't slam into the table, it just rest on that two by four. Well, that's better, but it's still clunky. And I'd I'd like to have a better solution. So I stumbled across a Z Keeper. As you can see here. It's a constant force spring attached to the spindle mount and the Z slider. The idea is it just relieves some of the weight from the spindle so that it doesn't force itself down when power is lost. So this is a better solution, but still not great. And I'd really like to have the right solution here. Fast forward a few months and Onefinity releases their Z20 braking motor. Now this is the right solution, it's an elegant one. This is the one you need. As you can see here, the braking motor is much larger than the non-braking motor. Now the installation is very straightforward and Onefinity has a great video on it. You can check it out on YouTube. I'll link it in the description. I won't recreate the wheel here, but there's one addition and one change to their installation instructions I'd like to suggest. First I'll touch on the addition. Some of the motors that they shipped initially had resistors in them like mine and maybe yours. The video didn't talk about whether or not that resistor should be left in place or whether it should be removed. And you know that said it really isn't that important one way or the other. I'd, I'd recommend you keep it in place. It's a little bit easier on the power supply with that resistor in place but it really won't hurt anything if you decide to take it out. Now let's touch on the change. When Finney suggests removing your spindle in order to access the, the set screw and the bolt on the lower half of the coupler. Now, I don't want to do that. If you move the spindle's height in its mount, you're going to have to reset up your 3D probe, the tool setter, your ATC potentially, and other things. And that's just a headache. I don't want to have to do that. Fortunately, you don't need to. There's enough clearance to be able to access it with the spindle attached. Just lower it all the way down and gently jog the z-axis down until you can access the set screw and that bolt. Once you're finished with the instructions in Onefinity's installation video, you're done. Let's see what happens when we cut the power. Bam! Hardly a movement. 